Hey everybody, welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, this is the Cred Campaign, Cthulhu Rises, Everyone Dies. I just thought I would like to start you guys with an interesting fact. Did you know there's an alligator in Southern Africa that is able to jump higher than the average home in North America? The reason for this is because its back legs have evolved to have a lot of muscle and houses can't jump. Sure. All right, everybody. That was Cthulhu Rises. Everyone dies. You, everyone, have a good night, and we'll uh, talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> what the hell, Kyle? Guys, uh, <laughs> as Carol is yelling at me, yes, I am Kyle. Let's go around, introduce everybody, and then we'll go through our usual spiel. Carol, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us about this other stream you're on that you love more than us. Wait, what? You mean my own? Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and a commissioned mini painter who now has her own mini painting stream on I'll Next Be on Saturday at 12.30 p.m. But I'm also on Mondays at 7 and Wednesdays at 8.30. Uh, where I paint minis and talk gaming and whatever the hell else you want to talk about. Uh, and for this campaign, <laughs> I'll be playing Andre Jaeger, my half-elven ranger. Monster, hunter, slayer, whatever. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's head on over to Ernie. Ernie, who are you playing tonight? I'm playing Riley, the ever helpful uh, warlock. And uh, my goal this mission is to uh, not get imprisoned or taken by these uh, ghouls. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I may rely on the uh, priest of Fett to help me out. They're my buddies now. And um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. I may visit a mausoleum too if we have time. Yeah, I already have you marked down as going for prison though. So this is going to be an uphill battle, okay? Okay. Okay, we'll, right. we'll see. And DJ, why don't you introduce yourself? The always enigmatic. You know what? I'm not going to even say the funny word. The always masked DJ. Yes, you can tell by my face. I'm ecstatic to be here. Yes, I am DJ. I am just a gamer, just trying to play games. And I am playing Bran, the Way of the Mercy Monk, also known as the Doctor. The Doctor. The doctor. Hey, uh, I'm gonna, you know, now that I finished, you can actually say this there's cred merch in the shop right now. I was about to during the whole spiel. I was going to even skip addressing who I am because I'm amazing and everybody knows who I am. So I don't even need an introduction. I just go through the spiel, which would include the amazing merchandise uh, that you can find. Click link below. But that's going out of order. So thank you, Carol. <laughs> I have to follow my script. Oh, How else do I get you guys through a campaign? Guys, we are again Murder Hobo Inc. You can follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archives. You can see 14 episodes of Cred. Or if you want to see me as a player, I don't know what that previous campaign was. I, I've forgotten everything about it now. Uh, if you yeah, want to sure. hit us up and play on some cool one shots, that's not going to happen this week, but we do got one shots planned for next Saturday. Uh, you can hit us up at M Hobo Inc on Twitter or at mhoboink at gmail.com. Hey, you can Kyle. Find... Also, don't what? forget, there probably is going to be a one-shot run by DJ in two weeks because I won't be here. Oh, are you running the next Thursday, DJ? That's what it's we were possible. talking about. Oh, that we're going to have to clean out the details. Oh, Hi. Look, he's got Say his hello. assistant GM. Oh, he's worse than Kyle. No. <laughs> <laughs> guys if you don't want to look at cute children who look like my identical doppelganger when i was three I want this he's better looking than i am so uh no he's not my identical clone but close enough um you can follow the link down below and listen to our only audio only podcast and if you want to guys some really awesome merchandise like carol said earlier the awesome cred swag is here you can get it on a duvet you can actually get it on a, a fat head 
cred and you put it on the ceiling of your bedroom so Cthulhu can keep an eye on you all night long. Don't tell them all the secrets, child. That's not what a DM does. Uh, <laughs> He's got a TP chaos. The, no, he's much better, actually. Uh, he understands that there's things worse than death. Uh, in fact, he was oh. the one who was yelling at me <laughs> earlier that, Dad, you should have stopped just before <laughs> Bran made his last death saving throw. You cannot have the beer, child. Ooh. Oh, the ball? Which yeah. ball? The big one? This one? Yeah. No, you could cram someone's head in with that one. Do me a favor. Go run out. Find your mother. And take those poker chips with you. And that piece of candy that's been on the floor for I don't know how long. <laughs> Go. Talk to your mother. Go. Um, wow. And that's how you do it, guys. That's Is that the one that lost its front teeth? Yes, that's the one who had his face slammed into the playground. Jammed <laughs> right up there. It was an ugly sight. Uh, he was a hideous child. Looked more like his mother. Uh, <laughs> You dick. Finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors, starting with Pirate Dog Dice for when you roll like shit, Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, you can special order dice from them and get some cool stuff. I'd also <laughs> like to thank them for <laughs> this thing right here. Oh, she oh. sent it to you. I mean, I literally just went over and picked it up. Oh, that's see, right. Uh, there is the famous Pirate Dog Dice on a natural one, mostly dedicated to Riley. But I'm sure there's others that it belongs to there as well. It's the dice and of navigation. The dice of nav, and you can tell that the ship is at the bottom of the sea if you can see clearly enough. Not enough potatoes. Not <laughs> well. The potatoes yams. keep it afloat. The yams. No, <laughs> no potatoes. I only know potatoes. No yams. Unfortunately, <laughs> the secrets of the yams were lost upon Riley. Yeah, <laughs> but for some reason, my patron really wanted to know about them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Adventure Sense. Uh, does your game stink or do your roles stink so bad you need to cover them up? Adventure Sense, they do have pirate ship. Strangely enough, it doesn't smell like fish. We'll get with them on that. They could also use some help over at Gen Con. So if you're looking to get some uh, free merch or a little bit of cash uh, as you help them out at Gen Con, go ahead and go to their website, adventuresense.com over at Oddfish Games and click to see how you can help them. They also have the cool Shine Project. If you're looking to write a story and you need to figure out what the right questions are and how to answer them correctly, that's what the Shine Project is for. It can be used in a and d situation but they're going to come out with a product later on that specifically tailors to that. But in the meantime, you have to struggle and use the Shine Project. Finally, check out their soon-to-be Kickstarter campaign, How to RPG with Your Cat. Get a piece of that because cats are adorable as well as delicious. So after you're done and you're mad because your cat TPK'd the entire party, you can learn how to cook it up in acid. What? Uh, what? Fuck? What? Okay, I have to pause right here. I am going to designate you three to recap what happened last time, and please take your time as I drag a little boy to hell. I, bed. <laughs> bed. I'll be right back. So, so do you guys remember what happened last time? I know yes, what. No, I have a few pages Riley, of notes. Riley oh, is going to recap it, man. Right, I Riley's remember. Riley's recapping it. Oh, yeah. much do you want to, Bran? No, no, no. Right. I'm just saying I remember. Okay. Well, then I, I can say uh, basically at the beginning of the episode, there was a drunk Zeb in his drunk tank who was screaming and we hear bones crack and we then pan to Bran resetting an arm in its socket which is the reason why there was bones cracking. Marju is his little helper and Bran gets asked to go to uh, the uh, stockade where the rest of our party is. So Bran tasks Marju to uh, take over and patch up the lightly wounded. And Bran meets the rest of us at the stockade. That is when we get to the point where Zeb gets attacked by some ghouls that popped out from the ground potentially. 
And we then come out of the room with Lothar, the captain of the guard, who's also there. And we fight back these ghouls. Unfortunately, Zeb and one of the guards die from this. Uh, we then realize that we need to go track these ghouls that are potentially in the lava tubes underneath the city. And luckily, there's an opening to the lava tubes that were nearby within the stockade, which is what they use to actually dump waste. Uh, we climb down this messy, messy pit, and uh, a couple of us fail their constitution saves, I believe. Oh, and shit. not me, Riley saved. And uh, we get down there, and as we start exploring, all the mutineers are dead in this little tiny cave room. At that time, we get attacked by uh, ghasts, I think, which are uh, potentially used as mounts by the ghouls. Uh, we are able to fight them off. It was very close. Uh, one of the gas actually impales itself on one of the stalagmites uh, because it slipped. And uh, unfortunately, we aren't able to learn too much in this room other than it looks like this is a breeding ground. And we then go back up and we tell Lothar what happened. And he says, ooh, potentially the ghouls are looking to take over. And that is when the door of the stockade bursts open and there is a magistrate, we believe, and some other gentleman that someone recognizes. And they are talking with Captain Kenza and Aiden outside, trying to beg for the mutineers' freedom. And they, uh, the what magistrate to turns the around. What by the way? Oh, they were all dead, <laughs> um, including Nebby, impaled on a stalagmite as well. Uh, well, uh, the magistrate then turns and sees us covered in shit and all other sorts of things and asks, what the hell happened here? And that's where we left off. That was done very well, very tastefully. Uh, gosh, that's what happens when you take notes, people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you forget to mention a few things, but that's okay. I, I cover the important things. You know, I skip some stuff. You know, they can people can always watch the back episodes for every lousy detail. So that's, a, that's right. Two YouTube hour episode. I am not going to go through that. Two if you want, I can tell minutes. you all the roles as well. Riley gets a net one and misses Eldridge Blast and Stalactite gets knocked down. <laughs> Andre gets hit for four damage. <laughs> I mean, I, I t actually, I'm not, I'm taking notes sort of, I'm taking it more as I'm writing a journal because I don't, yeah, there you go. I'm writing a journal uh, as Andre. So it's all okay. from her perspective. I don't, if I'm not in the scene, there are no notes. Oh, I have notes for everything. Oh, I know. That's why, it, and I'm depending on you here because you have notes on everything. So if yep. I need to know what somebody else was up to, there we go. I'm I starting really on page 86 of my on. notes. Oh my god, 86 pages of notes in 14 episodes. Holy! I mean, crap. it's it's pretty easy to just type it's along as people are talking. <laughs> it's going to be a huge novel when you're done. Well, I may adapt this to a novel. <laughs> we'll find out. Oh. Huh? Well, uh, so I do have to make some clarifications. Uh, some okay. very uh, uh, nosy members of Murder Hobo Inc. and some people on Twitter said, Kyle, you went too long. You should have ended the episode just before Bran made his final death save. And you know what? They're right. So no. we're going to pick up right there. Bran, go ahead. Roll a d20. No, we are not. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> well guys i tried you know it's my party's fault that this should... <laughs> you didn't cut it last time and that's fine i'm that perfectly happy going is... along on nights like that good all right so oh uh, wait wait frank frank wrote in chat calus javender attempts to get his beauty sleep beauty uh, sleep i do need that too to be honest let's <laughs> If beauty anyone sleep? needs beauty sleep, it's not that working, is Frank. Me. It's not working. Let's put it All this way: right. if I had made that death save and failed at the beginning of the episode, <laughs> I was just going to log right out. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been hilarious. <laughs> and good night. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm enjoying that too much now. Okay, so. We have the magistrate, you assume, 
a gentleman in full splendid silvery plate mail. <laughs> we have the Captain Kenza as well as First Mate Pasela. <laughs> Uh, uh, asking and talking about before you hear, and the scene that plays out is indeed the magistrate. What the hells are going on here? Well, what do you mean? What the hell's going? I think there's a lot of things going on here. What specific thing do you want to know? Who the hell are you? Why are there dead bodies? It's oh, oh my god. God, I thought they stunk with it. Why is there a dead ghoul in here? Who the hell are you? Captain Lothar, what is going on? We're with Herkenza. We were brought to this island. Uh, uh, we were sent here on an expedition. We came with Kenzia. We are not part of the mutineers. Which Looks over at Kenza, and she nods her head to confirm that. I look, I look at Kenza with just, I don't even know how to describe it. Sympathy, sadness, and uh, what? Sorry, go ahead, Riley. So, sorry, I, I was going to ask, maybe, maybe it would be better coming from Lothar, a brief description of uh, what happened in Zeb's uh, cell and, and uh what we were tasked with. Indeed. Um, sir, um, these ghouls here uh, were attacked. I brought these four in for quit for, well, these three in for questioning. You turn and look around and Cleo is indeed not here. It appears she has left uh, to get her beauty sleep. Who knows? I've I believe they were uh, involved in the escape of several mutineers that uh, belonged to the Hazel Follies, Captain Kenza's ship here. Uh, and in the middle of investigating, uh, they seem entirely innocent to me. And and then these ghouls came up and they ate Zeb. Uh, and, and they ate Grezja here. And he points at the dead guard uh, on the floor there. Uh, and I, that's what happened, sir. And then, uh, we realized that the ghouls came from beneath the stockade and the lava tubes and, uh, Lothar, uh, was able to provide us an entrance to the lava tubes and we went to investigate and that's where we found, unfortunately, our, our crewmates on the Hazel's Folly, the, the rest of the mutineers, and one other guard uh, actually dead in the lava tube, potentially eaten by uh, gas. As you say this, Lothar shoulders slump, and the magistrate gives a look. Really? Lothar, your job is not to investigate and look at things. It's to guard the city. Come to my office. And with that, Lothar uh, follows the magistrate into what you thought was Lothar's office, but now that you actually see the nameplate outside reads Magistrate Alwiggy. Can I make an inside check on the magistrate? You may. Uh, I think that is a nine on the die. Yep, so 13. What are you looking for? Uh, trying to figure out how I want to put it. Uh, do I think he's... I I'm, I'm guess I'm looking for sketchiness. I mean, you know, your job is not to investigate when clearly there's things around here that need investigating. And I'm trying to figure out if he's hiding something. Mm. If he's like calling him in to read him his rights because he's trying to cover up something. They just want Lothar. Because I know he wants, he wants to meet, Lothar wants to meet with us, not here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
Uh, and, and after what I saw in the graveyard, I'm convinced there's something very sketchy and very bad going on in town that is being covered up by the powers that be. So that's, I guess, what I'm looking for with this inside check to see if maybe he's one of the people that's involved. Uh, I will say with that check, <laughs> you might liken it akin to uh, 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 the desk sergeant at a police force where a beat cop has uh, done a little bit more than he ought to and it's doing the detective's work and it looks like that he is just there to reprimand uh, Lothar um, for for doing what he's not supposed Dereliction of duty. He is not doing so his he's, job. He's trying to do someone else's job. So he's just a lawful asshole who doesn't care about, you know, if something bad's going on right under his nose. As no, long as lawful, <laughs> as long as as long as procedures are being followed. I f yeah, I, we all know people. I would like say that. that's a fair. <laughs> Uh, and he goes with Lothar into there. Um, and I'll even say you can roll that um, insight over because you're kind of watching their reaction or yeah. interaction. Oh, and, wow. 21. Oh, 21. That's good. Yeah. Uh, Lothar's jaw just kind of sets up like, again, he is going to be doing he's being pushed down to do grunt work the way he tightens his hand on his axe he is a little infuriated by the fact that he's going to be talked down to by I don't know maybe by this bureaucrat I mean the difference between the two is you have this man of action huge ready to swing a great axe with one hand to befell enemies and then you have this skinny magistrate who is, as you said, that lawful asshole. Yeah. Um, and it's just that tense butting of heads that you get there. Okay. Uh, and so they head into their office. Magistrate, Commander Corwell, can you have the rest of the Toa God take care of this mess and, and sort out these individuals, please? Yes, sir. And he turns over to uh, one of the Toa guards. Grab a few more men from the barracks here. We'll take these bodies to the graveyard as island law. Uh, Captain Kenza, uh, first mate Pasala. And Captain Kenza is staring off into the distance since you told her that the crew is dead. Um, Bran, you noticed that uh, Aiden slips in and tries to comfort her, holding her hand. I'm, I guess there's nothing more that can be done here. Um, we'll, we'll be back at the, the inn. And Pasela wraps an arm around her shoulder uh, uh, and leads her away. Right. I am Commander Corwell. You are? Who are we? My name's Andre Yeager. Okay. Miss Yeager, you, sir? My name's Riley. I am uh, also traveling with this group your scales have you come in contact with some of those outside on the island no i i have not this is uh a gift from my patron your patron yes ubo sathla interesting and you sir so brand at this point has been like kind of hunched over, leaning against the wall, 
since he's been at one hit point this whole time. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's right. <laughs> and I've been kind of looking away. Can't you uh, heal yourself? I can't. Oh, shit. Not right now. I need time. Um, I <laughs> just, without looking all the way up, I just, I'm the new town doctor. Brand, His name's Brand. Brand. Excuse me, I, I need to get back to my place and heal up. I, it was very tiresome and rough down there. And I plan on kind of like scooting away. And since I'm still a monk, walking fast. Sure. I, it is almost like being a child again. And you're trying to avoid talking to someone. And their much bigger frame and their arm goes out and kind of prevents you from exiting. I would like to make an acrobatics check to slip underneath. <laughs> Do it! I love it. All right. This is going to be the first roll of the night, guys. One <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. All right. Do I get booster gold out here to really screw you over? I won't, because I am a nice person like that. Ooh, that's a 14 on the die. Let me pull up the paperwork here. <laughs> you uh, uh, managed to slip by. Yes. Nicely done. I just head out and go straight to the uh, to the house that I've taken over. Sure. Bran, it's been 13 years. I don't stop. I go fast. <sighs> Who said that? The magistrate? No, this would be the Mander uh, Corwell. <laughs> Commander, oh, Corwell no Commander Corwell in his plate armor, standing tall, glorious hair. I, Riley asks you know, Commander things Corwell. Have honestly, not changed in years. Uh, yeah, Brand or Riley asks Commander Corwell. Do, do you know Bran? He's been traveling with us uh, yeah. the entire time. He's my little brother. Wait, what? Really? I, that's amazing. He's never talked about family. Have you? I don't think any of us have really talked about family. It hasn't, hasn't exactly come up in conversation. To be fair, I can understand why he wouldn't talk to anyone about me. We didn't grow up so well. He's not my brother. He's my stepbrother. And, well, I say we had fun in our youth. He may see it some other way, but gosh. I remember the day when father sent him off to the convent. Why was he sent off to the convent? Did he not want to go on his own? He hasn't told you? No, I never really. Yeah, convent. Convent's not it. Uh, monastery. Monastery, convent. Convent's yeah, where the ladies go. The ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Thank there's you. a lot Bran hasn't been telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> He's right. Uh... No, I mean, well, I just said, as I said, we haven't exactly been discussing our pasts and families and things like that. So it really hasn't come up in conversation. I don't know. Well, we, his mother, my stepmother, um, my second mother, Although, thank goodness, we got out of the wife house before his third wife got married. Uh, she had died. Um, 
our father was um, broken up about it, and Bran was, well, he was quiet after that. And not knowing that there was anything to be done, we sent him to the monastery. Well, my father did. I, I was sure that, you know, if maybe he had stuck around a little bit longer, I would have been able to pull him out of it. And... Gosh. Do you know where he's staying? Yeah, the Creaky Cauldron, the old doctor's place right outside of the gates. You mean the Crafty Cauldron? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> he is. He is now this town's doctor. Uh, yes. Uh, that's how I... And he's very... honestly the only way I recognized him. I, oh. uh, I've seen some strange, strange individuals looking at you real quick, uh, Riley. Uh, I'm just, I'm just scribing on my little tablet. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I'm twisting it every once while rocks are falling to the ground. You know. <laughs> but honestly, if our father hadn't. Uh told me he was coming and sent him here to make sure that the colonization was going all right. I honestly wouldn't have been aware that it had happened. But I had received a letter from uh, uh, Sir Vincent uh, Corwell, uh, our father, uh, a couple of weeks ago, expecting your arrival. I told him not to bother him, that if he was happy at the monastery, that he'd be fine. But I think Father thought sending him out into the world would be the best. Well, Bran has been helping quite a few people, so, I mean, maybe it is for the best. I think he's... He seems to have found a purpose. Yeah. I think he's going to make this place better. And already has. And as you guys are talking, Toa Guard come in. And they're taking the bodies and they are putting them onto a cart and they're wheeling them out in the direction of the cemetery. So, would you like to tell me what happened here? And honestly, Bran wasn't looking too good. Not much to tell, really. I mean, there's... You have a ghoul problem. Ghouls came, take, took people from the prison, dragged them out of there and killed them. Probably to eat as a food supply. We went out there, we dispatched a couple of gas. Actually, we did not find any ghouls down there, did we? We just found the two gas. No. Where are the ghouls? The one who was very sneakily and stabbed you in the back. But he yeah, but... was one that you had seen earlier. Yeah, he was the one. Yeah, with the armor. we did. No, we did take care of one of them. But I swear there's probably, I mean, my instinct would suggest there's more than what we saw. And maybe there isn't, but. Uh... Well, if you've encountered gas, they're pretty mindless and they just kind of eat. Uh, two of them, you said, in a nest? Yeah. yeah. They get hungry. As far as the ghoul... Uh, you're... We're countrymen. We're all from the same place. Yeah. This island is a little bit strange. A little? There is... Well, hear me out. I've been here for five years now. A lot. Strange. The... Island used to be in a bit of a civil war, you could say, between these ghouls and the islanders. Um, but a long time ago, um, actually, uh, part of the magistrate's family, the very first magistrate, uh, and they made a treaty with the ghouls. Um, the ghouls stay down below the earth in the lava tubes. Um, they get access to the cemetery. The cemetery belongs to them. Uh, and 
we leave them alone, and if anyone dies, it goes to the cemetery. Uh, the island law. Um, and as long as we leave each other alone, all is fine. But to be fair, I have heard tales that some ghouls just get too hungry. It's just in creatures, to be honest, to eat dead things like that, but well, they've been the cemetery eating cemetery small. They've been eating living things now. They've come up multiple times yeah. to to grab living people here out of the stockade, as we just saw with Zeb and that guard that was just carted out. <laughs> it sounds like the same pair of ghouls, though. I imagine you've just encountered a hungry pair of ghouls trying to take care of their breeding guests. I mean, it sounds like they broke the treaty, though, to come after the living, though. They, obviously, they did. Probably. They took care to of a whole fair, lot that's of living, for too. The magistrate to talk about. Uh, I mean, are we supposed to go to war every single time Uskin tries to invade Jopet? No, if there's some skirmishes, the bureaucrats talk it out and manage to smooth things over. I imagine this is just going to be a similar case. I'm sorry they were your crew? Your acquaintances? Yeah. Just the acquaintances. Crew. I'll go with acquaintances. We were we met them when we got on the boat to come here. The ship. I'll talk to the magistrate and I'll make sure he plays well, not the magistrate, but he has the ghouls pay some blood money for what's happened here. But you can't fault an entire colony of ghouls for the actions of two crazed hungry ones, right? I'm not sure. If they are depends if they allow it. Depends if they allowed it. For what the story is. Marju. <laughs> you have Marju and Tua, the Toa guard. T-U-A. Shut up, Ernie. <laughs> well, well, if you wish to talk to your captain... Um, I think the magistrate will be busy after a while, and I don't think there's much honestly, more. Honestly, I want to see how Bran is doing. A crafty cauldron, and he goes over. He steps over, unlocks the door, opens it up, and you see what would be the the lockup, the evidence closet, as it were, and you see. Several potions, red, blues, greens, a couple of strange items. There's a, a, a chain, a rusty chain that's dripping water that's hanging off the door there. And you see as he plucks out two of the potions there, closes the door, locks it up. Um, do you need escorts to go home? I'm sure the disturbing sights... Do you want the Rukakan guards to accompany you back to your places? No, I, I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm I'm going to go back to our inn, and um, we'll we'll let you meet with your brother, and uh, we'll we'll talk to you later. Thank you very much. And if we have any more questions, we'll be sure to ask you. And with that, okay. he goes out the door, uh, gets onto the only horse you have actually seen in <laughs> the entire town, and starts <laughs> off and away. Uh, and I am assuming that, Anja, you are also heading back to the place. As you two leave, yeah. one of the Toa guards, uh, Lieutenant Momoa, actually, 
Lothar told me that he wanted to talk to you. Oh. Says to meet him yeah. at the Laughing Hammer noon tomorrow. Don't mention this to anybody. And she goes and walks off uh, towards the cemetery along with the cart of bodies. Bran! Hey, what'd you do ever since you ran away? Uh, Bran headed straight back to the Crafty Cauldron as quickly as he can in this condition. Sure. Uh, once he arrived, he would basically kind of roughly open the door and the sight you see as you open the door uh, uh, is an interesting one as you actually just beat Marju uh, into the building and Marju is holding loaves of bread, cheese, sausages uh, uh, and is trying to get in through the door and when you get inside Tua is over the fireplace uh, over a pot cooking something uh, and it looks like um, Jeremiah has awoken from his coma and is eating and just oh my gosh it's so good Oh. Um, I is he out of the room, or is he in his room? He is out of the room. He is sitting uh, in the little kind of kitchen area where there is a table to sit at and eat. Um, go ahead and roll a medicine check if you kind of want to figure kind of su- that, that angle out. Okay. Uh, uh, 14. 14. Yeah, it's not unheard of someone who's been in a coma waking up to be as hungry as he is. Um, he should definitely slow down from what he's doing. And it looks like, uh, uh, you know, they're just trying to keep him fed and keep him happy. I, um, I stop and basically stare for a good like 30 seconds and then I look to Tua as a Tua. Yes. Feed him mostly soup. Make sure all the bread is soaked in soup first. His digestive system is probably being overworked by eating such raw foods at this time. He needs more liquids. Oh, yes, sir. You've got it. If there's any chicken available, I suggest stewing that up as well. Uh, I think, Marju, did you bring any chicken? We all, I, this is all I brought. We'll go find a chicken. And I, I kind of look at Marju uh-huh. as she puts it down. Marju, could you please boil some water for me? Bring me some of the antiseptic. Place them at the door. Please do not enter into my room. I will be tending to my own wounds in a moment. Uh, sure, of course. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And then, again, I'll look at Jeremiah once more, but then I will head into my room a moment later. And I will remove the super filthy clothes and everything. Uh, <laughs> and right. I will retrieve uh, a cleaner pair and lay it out and wait for the water and soap and such to arrive. Sure. I will keep the mask on for the moment. Mm-hmm. And you have enough time to yourself in your room to kind of just ponder the events that have happened. And as you're stripping off your robes that are covered in shit and blood... On the other arm, opposite of where it had appeared earlier, you have grown more scales. And some of your flesh is just kind of loosely hanging in those areas. Kind of imagine um, uh, 
someone who has lost a lot of weight later in life and they just kind of had that loose skin there it's kind of sickly hanging off your other arm and you are getting little spines protruding up your arm Do, does the feeling in my arm feel different? In a way, it's spread, it's itchy, but more so in the places where your actual smooth skin is. And it's becoming slightly less uncomfortable, actually. Um, I will take a scalpel. Mm-hmm. Well, I might have to rest first before I do this before I make myself go unconscious again. <laughs> oh my lord! <laughs> One hit point left. It, I, <laughs> ah, I gotta work on my poker face there. <laughs> oh, I will make sure that I'm like, I stop. I stop as I probably move and like feel like the gaping. What if I get hit again? Exactly. That brought me down. You got hit multiple times. All right. So and then I like stop and like as the agony of all the wounds kind of sink in, like put it down, uh, start cleaning out the wounds as best I can. And my goal is to get a short rest. Sure. Yeah, the knock on the door. Marju has left the boiling water and antiseptic out. You are able um, to begin a short rest. Unfortunately, before you're able to complete it, though, oh, there God. is heavy knocking at the door. Not right now. I am busy. Too busy to see family? Yeah. I will dress as hastily as I can, covering up all my extremities. And once I am all set, I will sit down on my, on like a chair, since I am still not in very good condition, obviously. Say, fine, enter. And your brother walks in. Why'd you run off like that? I am very injured currently. I needed to tend to my wounds and make sure I did not get any sort of infection. The others should also tend to their wounds as quickly as possible. We are literally traveling in shit. That would explain some of the smell, I suppose. Yes. Your friends went off to the inn. Um, I mean... You were moving so quickly. I didn't see if you were injured or not, but judging from how your friends looked, I wanted to bring you these two potions. It is fine. I it's... will be fine in a little bit. I just need to center myself and I will deal with the wounds. Those are better left for an absolute emergency. Are you sure this is an emergency? I'm your brother. I'm supposed to be time. looking after you. I have looked after myself for quite some time. I now look after others. But do you have to turn away people who are just trying to look after you? What would follow? In the monastery, in the monastery, we learned self endurance, self reliance is what is important. For if you cannot endure, if you cannot. Experience the pain of others. You cannot reliably send them on to the other world or help them if necessary. I see they've done a number on you. But I have learned a lot. And I have surely taking a healing ways. potion isn't going to hurt you, though. I will be fine. I have learned to heal through the grace of my own divinity and the Raven Queen's divinity. I am simply exhausted right now. I just need a little bit more time and I will be fine. I 
All right. I appreciate sentiment. And I am sorry that I ran and left the others. I would actually be most appreciative if you checked up on them to make sure that they have dealt with their wounds and cleaned themselves properly. It is most annoying how many people think being uncleanly is okay. There's a few bylanders on here that certainly think that way. And you know your brother. It's been 13 years. But when you just say, you know, I appreciate you looking out, you know, that is giving your cat, your dog praise. He kind of lights up at the sentiment of it. Um, Yeah, of course, little brother. I just wanted to make sure you were okay and I am okay. I... I'm i sorry I didn't get a chance to welcome you to the island. I Honestly, I There's expected no you, you to come on it. the boat. The boat is a wreck in the harbors on the waters now. We were assaulted by numerous creatures of the deep. They were most foul and unpleasant, to say the least. It was quite the miracle we actually arrived at this island. Your your friend, the scaly one, he didn't come into a lot of direct contact with them, did he? If I recall, he appeared to have his skin condition. When we boarded the boat from Farzine. All right. Oh, wait, not Farzine. Um, what was the city we came from again? You came from Arulkatan. Arulkatan, thank you. Brand, thank you for not telling him about me being in the clutches of the Deep One. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he was held under for quite a while. We all (laughs) all encountered the creatures from the depth in some form of another. Hmm? I do not know enough to say whether or not something transmitted, but... He appeared to have this condition prior to us meeting them. He, if anything, his only illness is a lack of personal awareness and, well, some stupidity, to be honest. But he is good intentioned. Hopefully, his good intentions will not kill anybody in the future. I got that from him. Still. There have been people who've been attacked and they start showing signs of scales. We're going to keep an eye on him. Uh, We would appreciate if you do too. And Oh, Oh, yeah. I probably uh, absentmindedly flex my one hand, my my, uh, left hand a little bit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I only rolled an eight on that. Uh, We'll save. (laughs) Wisdom save. I... Actually, I would like to know as much as possible about this. If there is an illness that seemingly cannot be cured, that is one of the reasons why I'm here. I've already encountered some form of wasting disease on those found on the beach. Yeah. Uh, Other than the animals that get it, honestly, this wasting disease. um, I mean, then of course you get the animals who are affected by those corrupted creatures of the sea. Yes, I believe we encountered a pair of bears that appeared to have I don't know what it was some type of crustacean extremities coming out of them. Yeah, that's that's the fucked up things you get on this island to be fair. This island seems to have such corruption upon it. It is actually quite difficult to understand the value of such a place that is so inherently dangerous. Well, every place is dangerous, but we have the soldiers, we have the manpower, and uh, thanks to your ship, we've armed the men, and they're training with their pistols and their muskets currently 
we're even getting some cannons mounted onto the wall. As long as we keep them out, I think we're going to keep this place safe. We'll yeah. slowly whittle them down. As you can see, clearly things are not quite safe enough if things are digging simply from underneath the earth. I just recently found out the ground that we stand on could have a tunnel or two underneath it. Uh, yes, I told your friends about that. There are tunnels. Some of them connect to the water, but uh, most of them belong to the ghouls. Um, this um, Nogosh clan, I think is what the magistrate calls it, um, that they have a, a treaty with for many years. I, but The magistrate and I think that it's just a hungry occurrence, to be fair. And you didn't hear this from me. But hopefully there'll be some blood money that will go to the captain for her lost crewmates. And, and if they have any families, we're sure to do that. But to be fair, I think it's just a one-time occurrence. We have enough difficulties with the... Uh, with those corrupted sea creatures. This um, fortune seems to hang over this town like a miasma infecting every inch of it. Just before this incident, I had to deal with workers that were injured in a wall collapse incident. One did not make it. His body crushed under part of the stone wall. I could only see him off for to the Raven Queen's arms. I do not even know if his wife has gotten his final message yet. The guard was so adamant about me arriving. Between you and me, this island guard, these Toas, and I notice you have one working with you here. Yes, he's a very reliable young man. Might be too reliable. They seem awfully loyal to this Captain Lothar, and he's been quite a bit of trouble ever since I got here five years ago. What do you mean? A bit of a nut, a conspiracy theorist. Says that it's not really the deep ones who are the most dangerous things on the island. He keeps calling out these ghouls. And he's a bit xenophobic in that way. I've, I mean, I am completely off put by these creatures myself, but with the magistrate, we've had time and I've met a few of them and some of them have deals with the people in the town to, to store things in the lava tunnels like a cellar and the deals are perfectly amicable and so are the people themselves uh, completely off-putting the smell too god the dead ones smell even worse than the living ones to be honest with you but deals with the devil often seem generous until you're the victim Bran, when have you ever known me to be a victim? But that is not what I meant. But yes, no, I, I, I know what you meant, Bran. You need your rest clearly, and I'm I'm intruding upon you. It looks like you are doing well here at the. I wish Crafty you luck, Colton. <laughs> Crafty okay. Cauldron. I heard it was the Creaky Cauldron, but. Oh, I don't know. But yes, again, um, I do not want to take any more of your time. I'm sure that you have many duties. and You're right. Um, Bran, it's good to see you. It's, it would be nice to see you. Uh, but I, monastery, religion... 
you understood that a lot better than I did, and so did Father, to be fair. Good night. Be careful around the Toa Guard. Like I said, I don't wouldn't trust them if I were you, but I will keep an eye on the on him and the others. Hmm. I will let you know if I spot anything suspicious or disturbing. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't though the thought of these ghouls being neighbors is highly disturbing. For to be honest, anything that disrupts the dead in any fashion is an atrocity to my order, living or undead itself. I will respect the laws here. It is what must be done. Good. You always were good like that, Bran. That's what... That's what Father always saw in you. And he stands up... I've learned good and evil are simply two sides of the same coin. The only absolutes are life and death. You look a little beat up, Bran. Get some rest. And he goes, opens the door. Uh, standing outside is Tua. Um, did you want any of this chicken soup? Oh, I will have some in a little bit. If you could oh. leave it on the table, that would be wonderful. I'll do that. Uh, and I'm going to take Jeremiah back to bed, and then I'm going to leave shortly thereafter. I believe I sent Marju home already. Um, so it'll be just you here in a little bit, okay? That is fine. Thank you very much. I will check in on Jeremiah in a little bit. Okay. Door closes. Your brother walks out. Galloping of hooves away. The door opens and closes again. And you are left alone at the Crafty Cauldron. Once I am alone in my room, I will take a moment Remove my mask and eat the food and complete the rest so I can heal up. And then after that, I will check on Jeremiah. Sure. Do you want to take a long rest or you want to take a short rest and check up on Jeremiah? Only a short rest at this time. I must check on Jeremiah. Okay. You take your short rest, you eat, roll some hit dime. And you go out and check on Jeremiah. I will. I'll roll one hit die. Let's see. Okay. It's a hit die plus constitution, if I'm correct, right? That is correct. So I'll get back a total of five. Ooh. All right. So once I feel rested, Mm -hmm. once I feel my Kai replenished, I will then use a healing Kaya myself first. Okay. Just to get a little bit more in me. Sure. You hear scratching sounds outside the door. Or is it under the floorboard? Who knows? Good. That was max hit points. So now I'm up to 14. Hurrah. At that point, I will then remove the gloved hand and actually take the scalpel. There's two things I'm doing. I'm going Mm -hmm. to remove a couple scales and then uh, using my equipment, I wish to take, I will take blood from a vein that's heading back towards my body Mm -hmm. to see if there's any difference in my blood. Okay. D4. Well, you only take one hit point of damage for ripping off the scales uh, and removing the blood. The new blood coming from that area looks like regular blood, but a little clearer. It doesn't seem to be the same viscosity as normal blood. 
No, it appears to be off. And a little fish-like. I will set that aside. Then I will go check on Jeremiah. Jeremiah is passed out. uh, Laid back to rest. uh, In his one arm, he is holding a chicken leg that looks to have been boiled and is holding on to it quite tightly. I wish to check... First, I will check his extremity that is not torn off. The extremity not torn off? Yes. I'd like to see if what his condition is. Uh, do you mean his legs where some of his muscles were removed? No, actually his good arm. His good arm. Uh, his good arm. arm appears to be his arm, a little pallid in color, uh, a bit of grease on there from food, you would imagine. And there's, yeah, I mean, he may have eaten too much because there's a bit of a... a spoiled food smell coming from him. Um, I will check his neck. <clears throat> Make sure there's no gills or anything appearing. That was the last thing he said before he passed out. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are no gills. Um, we did mention, and it has been a while, so I apologize. I'm going to step back. Um, when you saw him and had recovered him, he did have some cuts on his arms uh, in places that would bleed that had been slowly kind of trickling out and smearing there. Um, those look like between the your care and the care of Tua and Marju that those have closed up um, quite nicely. There are no gills on his necks. If you're specifically looking for some of this deep one corruption, uh, you do not actually find any on him. That's good. At that point, I will check the injured extremities. The stump where his arm is at the shoulder looks well-maintained, although it got a little bit dirty with the food. And so it looks like it might need another changing. Uh, Perhaps the exertion of getting up and about has caused it to kind of open up and start bleeding again. Um, His legs, they still look fairly bad and are actually kind of shriveled up a little bit. He did wield a great sword, so he kind of needs both hands for that, Riley. I will (coughs) clean up the arm, get that all set so it doesn't reopen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Keep it tighter this time, so Mm -hmm. restricting his mobility in that joint to prevent it from reopening again. Mm -hmm. As for the legs... um, I will do what I can. Uh, Does it look like it's just shriveling again? They look like they're shriveling. and Does it look like it's spreading upward? Uh, Give me a medicine check. That's a 12. 12. No, you know what? the worst of it is really at his calves and at his feet. Okay. Um, it doesn't look like blood flow is being restricted. Uh, uh, there's still, if you kind of check arteries, you can still feel that pump of the heartbeat there, here and there. Um, and his key flow, if you're kind of using that, it's a little bit weak but is still fairly strong uh, through the rest of them. Does it look like I will most likely have to remove the corrupted flesh to help him? 
that is a possibility. You might give it a little bit more time. Just it's not like toes are turning black or anything. Like I said, you're still getting blood flow going through there and maybe some work and he might be able to walk again. Uh, but so he has his feet, correct? He has his feet, yes. So it's just the muscles that are gone, correct? Muscles. I will remind you of last session where you saw one of those ghouls ripping off a hunk of calf flesh and just gulping it down. Actually, and now that, that you mention it, the I investigated his body before. Mm-hmm. Given the fact of the encounter on the ghouls, does it look like their claws or teeth would match the same rough but surgical incisions that we saw before? Yeah. Mm. Theirs were maybe a little bit duller and dirt was in them. This one is cleaner, although eh, maybe a little bit sharper claw than what the ghouls you kind of fought with tonight. So, uh, and one who kept their hands cleaner. I guess another question then is, is um, do I know if ghouls, aside from just being filthy, have any form of transmitt- transmittable disease or curse or anything? Um, with your, you rolled me a religion last time. You didn't roll too well. Um, if necessary, I'll go reference any of the medical books in the uh, house. I don't know if there'll be anything, but who knows what the old doctor had. Yeah. Yeah. You can reference the books in there and that'll kind of give you a little arcana, nature, medicine, your choice. I will go with medicine. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. That's a 21. 21, good. Uh, Going through the reference material um, from the former doctor here, um, makes no mention of uh, like a lycanthrop bite that the ghouls have. They do not have that. Um, The ones that she's able to kind of see and meet with, it just mentions this smell of decay that just kind of constantly follows around wherever they go and that while their flesh does look like they themselves are decayed a little bit, um, that just has to do more with the the nature of how they live underneath the earth um, and possibly their diet of deceased corpses. Um, yeah, no mention about them changing in a bite. Um, nothing of that nature. The smell that I was smelling from him. I'm sure it was the food. Seems reasonable. Okay. All right, I will clean off the wounds on his legs, mm-hmm. apply whatever medicines that I believe might assist with blood flow and healthy regrowth of good tissue. Mm-hmm. And Tua has left a a jar of those leaves that you guys had encountered earlier that seemed to help with the healing process. If you want to use that to kind of add to the mixture there and make sure it goes well. For clerical magic, would that be a religion check or is that going to be under arcane still? For what kind of check? Clerical uh, magic. To like know about clerical magic and some of the effects that it can have. Uh, I'd, I'd tell you more with a religion check that was good than an arcane check that was good. I would like to roll religion then. Okay. Seven. I got nothing. <laughs> I was just trying to see if I might know what type of magic could help him regrow his limbs. Oh, gosh. With a, a seven. I mean... 
if you had just plain old ass that you've been in a monastery not everyone is a uh, a doctor monk like you there are some who are um, um clerics themselves and you've heard rumors of powerful magics uh like regenerate that might be able to help with that possibly even greater restoration um uh, just a stronger dose of healing magic could potentially aid him in recovery quite quickly no well, probably at a price pretty painful for him to have his flesh grow back that quickly but i mean magic gets you healed up and ready to go a lot faster than natural medicine does but all right mm-hmm. um after that i will what time is it it is late into the night then i will probably head to bed and i want to let the others have a chance <laughs> <laughs> You know, we're going to get to play. I mean, I've got my nice new pillow. You know, got your nice new pillow. pillow. I could just take a nap right here. You could Sorry. take a I nap. I have. I mean, I'm in my new mini painting studio. I could sit here and paint minis while this is going on. Sorry, I didn't mean to take so long. It's okay. No, it's okay. It's, it was interesting. We got to introduce a new NPC, and it was fine having him interact with both these two and then you. Uh, oh, Anja, yeah. did you want to add anything to the night? Oh, so it's, it was night when we left that place? It was nighttime when you left that place. Uh, shoot. Well, I, I think the first thing, we, we went back to the inn. Mm-hmm. I want a bath and a short rest. Sure. And I, as I sit in the bath, I'm sure, as I contemplate whether or not I want to go investigating the mausoleum. But by yourself, Ooh. Yeah. you can always bring Riley. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't know. If this, I think this is a Carol thinks it's a terrible plan. But I mean, Rand, I'm not really in much better shape, but uh, I have eight hit points instead of one. So that there's that. I'm all set now. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just. I'm just concerned because I mean, she remember she, she knows something sketchy or she suspects something scary, sketchy, and very bad is going on there. That they're doing something with the corpses. Uh, well, had that explained to you by? Yeah, we we know what's going on now. Yeah, we know that they're just eating the corpses. Oh, and this yeah, is the yeah, treaty. Yeah. This is that the treaty that the cemetery belongs to the ghouls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean. She doesn't want that to happen to her friends, you know? Sure. I mean, if you want to take on the ghouls, you can. All by yourself. You're capable. But they hit points. Let's go right now. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, uh, as you take your sure. bath, uh, roll me a perception check, please. Oh, that was not very good. <laughs> Four... Plus, do I have perception? I don't think. Oh, I do. Eight. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Some of your neighbors are um, doing a little bit of sporting. Sporting? In card, Carol. Remember, there are many names for the action. Oh, God. He's, I don't... Being, he's being PG. Uh, he is. I've never really heard it called that. My child is right there. I have not heard it called that, though. I've heard it called so many things. I was thinking uh, Jim Butcher Dresden Files. Yep. Human sporting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. I I guess I go, damn, Uh, I'm alone. This is sad. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to go do that. Okay. Um, but that is, oh, no wonder that poor guy wanted to, it wanted us to, 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 wanted to be buried. What a terrible thing. I know I go, I re- I'm going over in my brain with, you know, what we should do about this because this seems so wrong. 
And as you close your night eyes and we end the night, you're pondering these thoughts. All three of you just, as you try and rest, you just have these visions of the arms, the legs, the bodies just hanging there. Basically, <laughs> we, we see what, what the cavern? You see the cavern again. And just... I this have this though. Yeah, at some point, Nebby's head turns to you, Riley. <laughs> well, there's this kind of potato and that kind of potato, and this is extra waxy, which is great for frying, but this one is just... It's just utterly disturbing. Carol. Or sorry, Bran. You see the Wicot triplets. As they were in the cavern. And there is a look of betrayal in their eyes. As their sister. We trusted you. How could you do this to us? And Carol, as you sleep, it's just flashing images of bodies and arms of the crew and more bodies and seven fingered hands and these tentacled snouts. And you're no longer on Farzine. You awaken in the woods, lying down moving though being dragged across in the distance you can see that once golden city that fell the red red bloody red starlight that had been speaking to you singing you a song no longer has its attention driven on you and you look to your left and you look to the right and you see these almost rat-like creatures, small. Their noses splay out in tentacles. Their hands with too many fingers hunched over and they appear to be dragging, dragging your body still unmarked but bloody from the battle that you had done with these moon beasts. And they drag you deep into a dark woods and you black out again and you open your eyes and you see ancient ruins in this forest uh, Germanic in nature so dark wood the canopy is completely cutting out the sunlight but you can still see by these glowing lanterns hanging there and you are in a bed that is much too small from you. And one of these creatures, bespectacled, ancient. You're a long way from home, Dreamer. What's the what creature again? Sec, what was this creature again? This creature. Uh, uh, With the spectacles? Appears, like a rat. Oh, okay, so this is another one of those. With a nose that splays out in tentacles and too many hand too many fingers on its hands. You're a long way from home, dreamer. And you've lost everything so far. What can we do for you, Anya? You can say my name, right? Anja. <laughs> like Ganja. Okay, look, it's Anja. Yeah. Anja. Anja. Yeah. It's hard to make those hard Anja. sounds with a tentacle snout. RJ. RJ <laughs> Soft J. I can't do it. RJ Soft Keep them both the same. Just call her Anja. Forget the Jaeger part. I like the Jaeger part. 
It makes me think of shots, and I like to do just shots. Just call her Jaeger. <laughs> just, just, for now on, her name is Jaeger. We're just going with the last name bit. Anya Jaeger. Mm-hmm. And as he speaks your name, you see he pokes and prods you in the head. Mm. And you awaken in an empty bathtub. And you are all fourth level. Yeah! Woo! Now, uh, uh, to keep up uh, what I'm wanting to do, a wonderful tradition of rolling your hit dice and telling me a little bit about what happened to your character. Did you get inspired But what happened to you that you made certain choices? Uh, <laughs> who wants to go first? Hang on. It takes me like 30 seconds to level up, so I didn't. Oh my god. It just no, it just it just it just I use D D Beyond. So Okay. Well, as you use D D Beyond, you want to just talk through what's happening, what feet you might be taking. Uh sure. Did you, you want me to go any first? Cool new spells, go for it. Uh, the feat I'm going to take is, where is it, where is it, where is it, it's like two weapon fighting, dual wheel, wait, where is it, two weapon fighting, right? Dual wielder, I is think. It's a dual wielder in the, yeah, it's promises, yeah, dual wielder. Mm-hmm. So I gain a plus one to bonus to AC while I'm wielding a separate melee weapon in each hand. I can use the two weapon fighting of a, a one hand melee weapons and wielding aren't light. And I can draw a stow, my weapons, uh, together. Especially, basically, I can pull nice them both for- instead of pulling one at a time. So are you going to be cool and get rid of the short sword and the other one and pull out like a long sword and a mace? I or maybe start wielding get- a great axe? I basically have to get them right now. Well, Jeremiah has to- a spare long sword, right? Huh? No, he or has a great sword. Great sword. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> all right, so that's see that levels up that. All right, and then let's go back here and go to spells. I believe I'm gonna just take uh, who do I get right now for spells. Okay, I get another first level spell, so I'm gonna take cure wounds because I feel Probably like we a good need one. if I can. Why is mm-hmm. it? Why isn't it let me take a spell? Because it hates you. Apparently, maybe do I not get spells? You don't have to take spells like a wizard. You automatically have a list that you choose from. Yes, I know. You just have to go into the spell inventory and do it. But don't I get an additional spell? It'll just add in. I don't know. Is it spells known or does she just pick from the entire list? Oh, So we won't worry about this. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it, but I will... If either I'm gonna, I might switch out. Uh, absorb. Hmm. I'll think about it. We'll talk I about that take later. That. Yeah. I believe you uh, also have a hit die, right? Uh, oh well, I. Oh, that's right. You want us to roll freaking roll because I'm I'm cruel, and I have these Cthulhu. Dice. I just always like to actually. Yeah. Hang on a sec. Deal with it, Carol. Let me get to. <laughs> Oh, why it's pretty is... much advantage, Carol. What's there to worry about? No, it's not that. <laughs> well, I, it certainly didn't pay off last time. What is my hit die? Ten. Ten. All right, ready? Yeah, hang on. Okay. Uh, that... Well, eight. <sighs> Carol. What? Well, that is a big old ten for you. Oh, cool. All right. Get back. Let's uh, move on to Bran. Hey, Bran, how's it going? Better. Better. You don't get another key point, right? That, those nice. stop at three, right? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> just wait until I'm higher level and I'm just using them every other moment. <laughs> key point, key point. Ah! <laughs> so what did you end up doing with fourth level? You take a feat, you take the ASI, or did you multi-class? Uh, into barbarian. Oh, that would be just no, because I wouldn't be able to stack the bonuses between my between <laughs> armor. That would be sweet, though. <laughs> no, uh, cleric cleric would leveled, make more sense. A cleric could actually work, to be honest. But as I leveled, I took another level in monk, mm-hmm. and um, 
Given the events and all the weird things, I thought it would be very wise, especially since it gives me another point in my wisdom, which will then make my wisdom score 20. I took the observant feat. So oh. now it could be absolutely disgusting <laughs> and have a passive perception of 22. Jeez. Uh, uh, we'll and see about a that. Passive Deal insight of 17. <sighs> and That's a passive investigation of 18. <laughs> All right. Uh, you roll a d4 for hit dice, right? Uh, no, that would be a d8, sir. All right. So I will roll mine on D D Beyond and see if it gives me luck. Ooh. So it rolled me a six, which is reasonable. I rolled a five. You're good. So six it is. Yeah, hey, it's above average. And finally, we get to my favorite character. Uh, Ry- I mean, we get to the last character, Riley. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't make the observant feat, um, and we appreciate that so much about him. Yeah, I'm gonna up my dex by one and my intelligence by one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now my AC is 17 instead of 16. Hey, that's right, right my AC is 18 now. Um, and also with this, I get a, another cantrip, so I think I'm getting pressed digitation. Um, cleaning all of my my notes and things is a pain uh you have to be very careful so i i I want to uh help clean and and keep tidy and then um for my additional spell i'm not quite sure yet there's a couple cool ones like crown of madness uh (laughs) that that may seem fun so uh, i'll probably get crown of madness Okay. And I would assume that also my mutation spread slightly more, um, which is as why you, my dex increased a little bit. <laughs> as you uh, wake up in the morning, you are probably the only one who didn't clean the crap off of him. And you, you know a spell. Well, Press the digitation. That's the yeah, spell. Yeah. And you go to cast it and it's not actually hand motions, but it's this will and all the gunkiness on your skin just kind of absorbs itself into this slight sheen that your scales now have on your body. As opposed to being shuffled off, your body just seems to absorb all of it and you are clean and shiny. And disgusting. <laughs> Maybe a I little slippier than you used to be. <laughs> uh, I, I think Ubosathla is more of like a, a porous tentacle beast. Mm-hmm. So maybe 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 the beginnings of some tentacles or something. I don't know. Tongues pop just, out of his There's um, some his on like my collar of your shirt and some of it just kind of comes out in the tentacle and just... Maybe maybe my skin is a little bit more pocked and greenish. <laughs> Gonna get little tentacles coming out of his beard. Oh yeah, yeah. There, <laughs> does yeah. he have a beard? No. He does now. Yeah. Uh it'll be great. So I'm I'm totally cool with this. All right. And uh I'm, what I'm quite excited. are we rolling for you? Uh D eight. D eight. You ready? And yeah, let's do it. Oh, okay. I got a four. Got a five. So better than average. I got a you five. You take the five. Yes, you get a five. Uh, five plus con, right? Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. You all wake up. You feel strengthened, cleaner. Maybe a little bit odder in some of your cases. More. Con- Used in others and while the birds are singing maybe there's still this kind of tense anxiety driven horror underneath you have the morning to yourselves unless you would like to go ahead and skip forward to your meeting with Captain Lothar um, in the morning I'm going to make sure I 
read the remaining letters and things that I haven't had a chance to read. Okay. But uh, we can discuss at a later time if you need to prepare, Kyle. <laughs> um, um, just well, as a quick... Uh, eh, go ahead, Bran. It'll give me time to actually read and very familiar size myself. What were you going to say? So for the morning, I will do morning meditations, uh, yoga, and some other forms of uh, training and exercise for about two hours. So I'll get up probably just before dawn. And -hmm. then I will begin some testing on the blood sample that I took for myself. Okay. Uh, Just to get a general idea of what's happening with the blood. Sure. Give me a good medicine check. And this is to make sure you're treating it properly, um, being careful with it, trying not to dilute it. Or not dilute it. That was almost a nat 20. So that's 15 total. 15 total. Okay. Yeah, and there will be, I will make sure that I have like section samples. So if I ruin one sample, I have more to use. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you are able to do that and have it separated for study. Um, at some point, Jeremiah wakes up to a growling belly. I will go see him. Jeremiah, you're awake. Oh, yeah. Can, can I eat something? Hmm. Uh, before you eat, I wish to take some of your blood to check. You have been asleep quite a long time. I want to make sure that you are all right. Yeah, sure. Is, is, is Cleo okay? Cleo, I saw her just yesterday and she was quite fine. She sucks. She does. <laughs> wow. Do not worry. I was awful I on made the beach. Sure that, I made sure that we found you. As I take the blood sample, I will kind of look and like, can you tell me what happened to you? What, how did you get taken away? I, I was standing watching. Oh, and Belly is growling, and I, I just had to use the bathroom, and and something grabbed me, and then it hurt. And then I woke up here, and I'm. Can I have some eggs or or sausages? I think uh, I saw that kid bring in cheese. Um, I'd like to make. Well, <laughs> do I need to make an inside check with my new passive insight? His what are you looking for? His um ravenous appetite. Does that seem reasonable? His body is on the mend. You've given him some medicinal qualities that would speed up the healing, which might speed up metabolism as well. Okay. Um Nothing out of the ordinary. If you want to try and roll a higher insight or medicine check, I suppose I can. I will go ahead and roll. I'm not going to give you anything. There's nothing extra. Okay, fair enough. (laughs) Um, I will take the sample and place it aside uh, before I leave. This. Tell me, did you hear anything odd that you can remember when you were abducted? There was a little girl. Little girl? Yeah. What? And they dragged me into the cave. The little girl dragged you into the cave? Maybe. I just remember there was a little girl there. Do you think I, I you would remember her. what she looked like?
you are able to get a description of said little girl. I'd have to go through my notes just to double check what she looked like. But uh, uh, if you bring that up to anyone, I'll assume that you have Jeremiah's version of what she looked like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before I leave, I'll ask one more question. Mm -hmm. Did you hear any laughing? Yeah. Hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh, let me go get you some food. Okay. Uh, going will... back over, uh, you are feeding Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, to you, Riley, you finish reading these letters um, from a rural Catan, and you realize these are kind of updating letters that um, was going to Rizante, like Rizante was almost like a headquarters. Um, And it's letters talking about the setting up of this cult in a rural Catan um, outside of the city itself in the woods and talking about Uh, recruiting some of the local people um, making contact with a great undersea uh, colony that had been nearby talking looking for those who who dream searching among those locals for people who dream in order to to communicate better, um, avoiding the law, the idiotic guard of the Rokotans and the wretched Bacabites, uh, which you will recall is Cleo's uh, uh, religion and one of the other kind of holding lawful powers there, um, sacrificing some of their members in order to keep the rest of it hold about 14 years ago it gives a description of a woman a a prodigal daughter who they think might be one Isabel Walby And letters talking about trying to get her back into the fold and possibly succeeding and using her offspring to lure her back if necessary. You read more letters. Uh, talking about the collection of the dreamers that there is some great talent here in connecting to the other side and mentions of a powerful line from some family in the middle of the woods. And in the most recent letters, it talks about the loss of one of these dreamers that they have captured. And a a vessel of magic that's wild and untamed a child that they might be able to use and that the loss of this dreamer would would be forgotten, hopefully forgiven, if they managed to bring this person into their fold to capture this stray Bacabite 
and steal her from his flock. And there are no more letters after that. Cool. Uh, uh, I, uh, I put together is something, some Isabel. mention, I apologize. Oh, okay. Um, saying that they go by the name of the Deep Below. Okay. Deep mm-hmm. Alone. That's good to remember. Um, so I, oh, I still. The Deep Rising. The deep alone. Deep <laughs> below. Not alone. I heard a deep alone. Um, deep cool. rising. The deep rising. Okay. So I, I still remember Isabel Walby from the journal that I read before, though I don't realize Brand's connection to Isabel Walby. Mm-hmm. Um, that was something that only he experienced himself when I lent mm-hmm. him the journal. Mm-hmm. Cool. So. Uh, that's good to know. I, I have those in my notes and I'll ponder that a bit. And, and I can go into more detail later, but that's just the general notes. Okay. Yeah. I may, may want to talk to Cleo about that, that group of hers later, but mm-hmm. that's, I have other things to ponder right now and explore. Sure. Okay. And Carol. Mm. Yep. Anja. Anja Jager. <laughs> just say, Jager. Just say uh, Jesus uh, Jager. Right. Jager. Right. There you go. Yagar. <coughs> yeah. 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 Um, oh, what am I doing? What are we doing this morning? Uh, I'm thinking about running out and getting actually a quieter pair, a uh, quieter suit of armor. That's maybe inferior, but I thought you got the leather armor from uh the I, No. No, I no. I no? no. I think the thing was wrecked. Or or did we? Yeah, I, I think uh, I think filthy. you did because I had mending and we talked about me using mending on Oh, I, all right. So this is assumed you did. Uh yeah, I would have done that for you. Was that that wasn't special, it's just leather, right? Wait, was it studded leather? A studded leather armor. Yeah, it was just plain studded leather armor. Uh, yeah, ni- oh, not sorry. Neither of these creatures are wearing uh, studded leather armor. So yeah. Oh that, no, I the, was gonna run by a set. Third stealth one behind Anja. That was the one with the leather, though, right? Correct. Okay, so yeah, we did, did we get the get it? studded leather. Okay, we did get you it. You did get it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you cleaned it. Well, I mended it. I didn't right. have prestidigitation <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> uh, I would try to clean it. I don't know how good I am cleaning it, though. Yeah, just put it in the bath. It'll be fine. <laughs> I don't think it works like that, but... Yeah, I know. It doesn't, especially yeah. not leather. Uh, so I wear that, then I can actually sneak around without uh, disadvantage. And I don't believe it. If I do stud leather it, with my decks, it actually is the same. Uh, so yeah, the max of plus two bonus to that type of armor? No, nah, that's uh, what stud okay. leather I don't believe has a. Let me, let's take a look. All I know okay, is they look. both show up as 18. Cool. I do not wear armor. Yeah, no, I don't believe Stud of Leather has like, a max. Literally, Carol is the only one that wears armor in this party. I, yeah. yeah, that is true. Studded Leather. Well, nope. when I, when AC I, is 12 plus dex modifier. Yeah, so masculine. it's actually, it is just, it, it literally is the same thing as my. So, actually, your AC will go up by one because of dual wielding. Right. It goes up also, to I strongly suggest getting uh, another heavier weapon for your second weapon. Well, that would be great. I will have, maybe I'll go buy one. Uh, I feel stronger in the morning. <laughs> sure. uh, let's see. Oh, out. I can go to a blacksmith. You could. Yeah, you know one that may I have some alloy or something, one. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you can get her to start making me something. Roll me a D100. 
Oh, so let's see. I believe I want low for this, right? That's not low. That's not like ridiculously high. That's a 70. 70. Yeah. Uh, on your way out the room, um, <laughs> you see um, first mate Pasela, and he's walking up the stairs carrying food up to his room, you would presume. Yeah. Um, are you all right? Talking to me. Uh, well, I know you're not my crew anymore, but. Uh, well, it's been a day. Uh, that was not a happy well, it's sight. Not morning, but okay. Well, I mean, yesterday. Yesterday was a day. A real doozy, I'd say. Yeah, I'm really sorry about what happened to the crew. We didn't, I'm sorry we didn't find them in time. We didn't know until yesterday that they had even disappeared. No, we, um, Kenza and I appreciate what you've done. What are you, what are you and Kenza going to do now? I mean, are you stuck here? We're going to find a new crew. Okay. There's nothing the gentleman came by this morning uh, gave us 500 gold said it was blood money from yeah for the deaths of the sailors and that um that we were to give it to their family Kenza uh, did not like that but we'll be able to take the money and start again. Hopefully with a little bit more success. She, um, well, I'm bringing this up to her just to check on her. She's been, yeah, she hasn't been right. By the way, if you see Riley, um, yeah, maybe keep him away and tell him that we're not interested in hiring him as a navigator for whatever reason. <laughs> or a cook? Or a cook. <laughs> <I'll> be... <laughs> we we don't want him on the ship anymore, is what we're saying. Um, it's more like, a, I believe albatross are considered bad luck, aren't they? Mm, they're good luck. I think killing like, an albatross is bad luck. Oh, right. So, yeah. So, like, having them board is like killing an albatross. The rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. What? Yeah. Uh, um, he excuses himself unless you want to ask him anything else. Nope. All I'm going to say is I can understand why she's not right. How are you doing? Actually, I'm asking that. How are you doing? Oh, I've lost, I've lost men at sea before. What about this place? I imagine it's no different. I think this place has an effect on people. Maybe. I don't know, honestly. Well, I'm glad I just has... know this place is bad luck. And honestly, I don't think I'll ever sail here again. I think Captain Kenza and I are... Kenza and I are going to maybe sail out of the sea here and see what lies beyond and now, not look back. I almost want you to take me with you, but I believe I have some sort of a purpose here. Hopefully to change things for the better. We go where the wind takes us. It's a fun way to live. Well, when, for the world. When you, how much longer do you think you'll be here? Oh, we've got um, the ship right. He's working on the ship right now. A little creeped out by. Oh, no. I just what? had a brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that'd be a Kyle that had a brain fart. A little creeped out by Mazetta, but 
he's still willing to do the work regardless. Well, considering that makes sense. I think that's his entire purpose for being is to work on the ship. Where is he anyways? Is on the ship? Yeah. He stays on the ship. Well, it's I want to thank you for getting us here. And I am sorry about everything that happened to the crew. I said, the silent has a weird effect on people and I think it affected all of them. And I'm not talking about what, how they died. I'm talking more about how they all ended up in jail. There's something wrong with this island. So I hope you get the fuck out of here soon. And maybe our paths will cross again. I tell you what, when the boat's ready, you can have a place on board if you like. But not and Riley. <laughs> not Riley. We, he's all right. He tries hard. He's a good boy. But he really does. That is the worst luck I've ever seen on a ship. <laughs> Thankfully. Although he's... And maybe it's best we leave his bad luck here on the island, too. He's been pretty capable in a fight, though. So, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Riley the e boat. Mm -hmm. And you see, he goes up the stairs towards um, Captain Kenza's room, opens the door without knocking. A little and... sporting. <laughs> that is the word of the day. Yeah, and where's Nookie, by the way? <laughs> we will end the show there tonight. Nicely Not much done. of a rank, but... Uh... That's all right. Good show. <sighs> Good show. Level four. Show. Ooh, level four. So mm -hmm. when are we going to get to level five? I know. Level ah, five is dead to nice me, Ernie. Me. You're dead to me. <laughs> so I guess I'm dead to everyone. Oh, level five and, and level six are looking mighty appealing. And oh by, yeah. And by the way, for for the record, yeah, rangers do not get a new a, an additional spell level three. So I swapped out. No, I did not swap out good burial. They probably should. Forget Carol, swap out I'm just going to say this right now. Uh, I swapped out hunter's mark. I strongly suggest um, pass without a trace as a good option. If we want to be sneaky, oh, that's what will make us sneaky. That's true. I was thinking cure wounds since we all seem to be getting pasted every fucking fight. I'm doing what I can. Every I'm doing fight. What I can. Well, that's what I mean. Well, I mean, if Cleo was around, I mean, well, I mean, I guess I can. I haven't really cast anything. I could switch it for that. If, as long as again, once I hit level five, one more damage, two, an extra attack, add with flurry of blows. I'll oh. get three attacks, and I'll be able to heal in the same action. I don't think that's yes. not a first level spell, is it? No. Oh, that's healing. why. Yeah, no, I don't. I can't get it yet, anyways. Now I'll be able to uh, attack three times, or attack twice as an action. Bonus action, flurry of blows. Use a key point uh, to do that, and I can also heal in the same round. So it'll be a good level. Gotta get level. there first. There's gotta still I know, a lot I know. To do. It's like it's haunting me. <laughs> All right, guys, this is Murder Hobo Inc. Cred, Cthulhu rises, everyone dies. Unfortunately, everyone lived tonight. Yeah, uh, we didn't have a fight though. A couple of individuals that you don't know about. This is Ernie playing Riley. This is Carol playing Anja Jaeger. And we, of course, have the one, the only DJ playing Brand down below with the many faces of Brand shirt. Look for that in the uh, Murder Hobo <laughs> in the future. Remember, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive, get a hold of us if you want to play, or if you just want to talk about D&D, you can hit us up at our Discord channel. If you want to take a look at our faces and never look at them anymore, go to the audio thing. You can just listen to us talk. It's fine and dandy. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, for creating some wonderful rolling dice. Um, Carrie, I'm going to need some dice 
uh, for the players that always roll low, uh, specifically their hit point dice. Just rewatch it. You'll know which dice to make for them. Uh, and then wonderful <laughs> Odd Fish Games for their Adventure Sense. If your game stinks, get some Adventure Sense. Uh, Pirate Chip, uh, the Putrid Sewers are personally my favorite and the only thing I've been able to smell now for the past year and a half. Um, I used to enjoy the smell of my child clean from a bath. Uh, you know, that wonderful baby smell that uh, all parents get the joy of having. No, it's just putrid sewers and it smells like oh he God. shat in his pants all the time. Oh my God. <laughs> wow, Was that too God. much, guys? That's too much. It's time to end the show. Everybody <laughs> wave. Thank you for watching. You all have a good night. No.